Hello all. So today in this lecture we will see an introduction to Python. So Python is a general purpose programming language and it was created by Bureau Van Rosen in 1991. The second version of Python was released in 2000 and the third version was released in 2008. Currently we use the third version of Python. The speciality of this Python is it works on different platforms. If you are using Windows or Mac or Linux, or if you want to write some hardware kind of things in Raspberry Pi, you can use this Python script. Python has a simple syntax and it is very much similar to English language. So if you know to read and write in English, you can simply code in Python. So Python runs on an interpreter system. So that is, there is line by line translation in the Python interpreter based system. So if there is some error in, in a particular line, the Python interpreter will stop its execution there. So code can be executed as soon as it is written. So advantage of that is we can do prototyping very quickly. So if you want to write some code and check whether it is working or not, it is possible in Python. So another advantage of Python is we can use procedural oriented programming in Python or if you want to do some object oriented programming like in C++ or Java, you can use this Python or if you want to do some functional oriented programming like in C, you can use this Python language. Coming to the Python installation, if you want to check how, whether Python is installed in your system, on in Windows you have to check search in the start bar for type Python you can, or idle you can see whether it is installed in your system. If you want to check in Linux or Mac, open the terminal and then you have to type, simply type Python and you will find the version of that the Python that is installed. You have to see that you have to use the latest version that Python 3 should be installed in your system. So if you find that you do not have Python installed on your computer then we you simply visit this, uh, this website. It is freely available, you can download it and install the system, all the documentation, everything there is there on this website. So how to use Python? So Python can be run on different ways. So if you want, if there is an interactive shell in the ideal environment, you can simply write uh, lines and you can simply execute there itself. Or in the ideal environment, you can simply type and open that file and you can simply type the code and you can run save it somewhere and then you can run the program or if you are using some editors like vi editors or notepad you can simply write the codes in that editor you have to save that script then you can run it in the command prompt or if you want to run online there are different sites like collab or coagle you can write codes there you can run the programs there itself So today we will see how to run codes in the interactive shell. So Python expressions and statements can be run in the interactive shell itself. I will show what's an interactive shell. I will show with the ideal environment also. So what you have to do is you have to launch, if you have installed Python, you have to launch this ideal. You can find something there and you can check the code. I will show the examples. So, so this is the interactive shell so if you type idle uh, i am using windows system so if you are used to type idle you will uh, open this shell so this is a python shell so it will contain uh, an opening message like this the version of this python that is installed here and also you can uh, see uh, the greater than symbols <coughs> this is a shell prompt so if, if you want, you can simply type help and you get all the interaction. You can type something help about thing or anything you can simply type here. And you can enter any expressions here and check the result. So this is an interactive shell. So this is the first way of writing codes in Python. You can write some code here and you can execute here itself. For example, if you want to find 4 plus 5, you see, simply type 4 plus 5 and you will get the result. Anything can be done here. So if you want to uh, type uh, hello world here, you can simply type hello world. 
and that will be displayed here or if you want to write something like this so i have stored something like this uh, i have given some name a bit powers and it is stored in name and if you run some code like this if i want to do hi i have simply typed here hi how are you plus and you have given plus name so what it takes is we have already assigned some name uh, i have been promised to this name so if you execute this program so i have typed hi how are you man and if i press this enter key the result will be hi how are you a bit promised. so that name will be appended here so in this way you can execute codes in this python uh, interactive shell or if you want to print something like this you have this print statement here so this is a print fu uh, function so what it does is it evaluates the thing inside this br uh, bracket and it will be valid when you press the enter key hi how are you will be displayed here so this is how you can run program so if you want to run uh, another print function like this if you want to run something like this print hi how are you and comma you are giving the name also what will be displayed the finally it will be this you know whatever about in this uh, we call this expression all the expressions will be evaluated and the result will be shown when you press the enter key so it will be hi how are you a bit print so in this way a python can be used so this is an interactive shell this is a python interactive shell you can simply type anything here and you will get the result here 5 by 7 the result will be shown here so all those results will be shown here itself so this is the first way of writing codes in python you can use this interactive environment and you can simply type anything and you will get, get results like this okay okay so we have seen all these examples next how to do this input processing and output in python so we have an interactive shell in python so here, here the input thing is keyboard and the output here it is terminal so whatever you type using the keyboard and the result will be shown in this terminal that is the interactive shell you can see the result there itself so what we are seeing is a print statement a print function we have seen this the syntax of this print is like this there will be brackets and this something in the angle brackets actually all these things should be replaced by something else so we have already seen this print how hi how are you and you hi hi how are you will be displayed in the interactive shell and if you want to include more expressions it is possible by you have to include using commas you have to separate using commas so any number of expressions can be included in this uh, print statement and if you want what happens is when you do this kind of thing when you use this print statement it goes to the new line so if you want to continue in the same line what you have to do is you have, at the end of this print statement uh, what you have to do is you have to uh, enter an empty string like this and equal to some empty string should be entered here so the next statement will also be displayed on the same line for that you can use this kind of operation okay next is how to get input so in order to get input what we use is an input function is there this input name is a function name so if you want to get something you have to include it in the brackets and whatever that is prompted will be inputted input and it will be assigned to this variable any variable can be used to input that string and that value will be assigned to this variable so if you want to input something like this so input is a function like print input is also another function which is used to input uh, uh, something. so what that does is it evaluates this expression the input function what it does is it displays a prompt for this input uh, here it is enter your name 
and it receives the keystrokes. Whatever we type, it receives those keystrokes, and those keystrokes will be stored in this name variable. That's a variable. So that will be stored in this name variable. So this is what it does. So we can simply print this name, or if you want to print this uh, using print function, you can use this print name, or you can. Uh, these are the steps that are involved. So you have to display a prompt for the input. Then it receives a string of keystrokes for characters entered at the keyboard and returns a string to the shell. So we will see this example. So we will see the example. So we will uh, see the input function. So here, this is a function that we have used. So what it does is we have simply type name equal to and input and a unit. So input is a function. What it does is it waits for the, some keystrokes from us. So if you are giving something, uh, I say, I have given my name itself. Sorry, I forgot to press the enter key, sorry. Okay, so it will be displayed like this. When you press this enter key, uh, the name, uh, this will be displayed like this enter uni, and you can simply type something here. Now, if you want to display that word is displayed, you can simply type name, you will get this uh, thing, or if you want, you can simply type this uh, name print using this print function, you can simply display this. So this is a way you can write interactive program. So here, what we have seen, we have seen another function. That function is input function. What it does, it asks, it waits, this is the argument. We call this as an argument. So this is a function and this is an argument. And it is it waits for some uh, characters that is to be typed from the keyboard. And when it is typed, it will be stored in this variable name. So name will contain whatever it is typed. Type. That is, I did this type and it will be called name. And when you ask, when you type name, you will get the name printed there. Or if you use this print function, what we have seen earlier, you can get the name there itself. So, the, in this way, you can program this. Okay. Next, uh, we will see type conversion. So input function, we have already seen this input function. So input function always builds a string from the user's keystrokes. So whatever we type, if you are even typing uh, numbers, if you are typing 53, it will be input as string. So the interpreter doesn't know whether it, is, it should be used as a string or whether it should be used as a number or integer or float number or anything. So everything what we input using keystrokes will be considered as a string in Python. So, programmer must convert them from strings to the appropriate numeric types. So, if you are entering 45, it should be used as an integer. So, we have to convert it into integer. Or if you want to convert it into a floating point number, then we have to convert that string into floating point number. So, whatever you type in the shell will be considered as a string. So, you have to convert it. So, we need some conversion mechanism. So, we have, we will see two types conversion functions that is one is int and the other second function is float. So this is an example. We will see this example. If you type like this, uh, we will see with an this example symbol. Wait. So we will see some example here. Uh, so what you have given is we have already seen this input function. Input and what you have to do is you have to input enter the first number. So this function we have already seen. So this will be displayed and user can enter some characters using the keyboard. So what it happens is it will be stored as a string. So if you want to convert to an integer, if you are trying to enter some number, then you have to convert it. For that we use this in function. So what it does is it takes input as a string, then Using this function, it will convert it into an integer and it will be assigned to this first variable. So, you will see this. So, enter the first number will be displayed. Then, what you have to do is you are simply entering 
number 45 is a singular type and what this does is it will be converted into integer using this uh, in function then again if you want to enter some other function if you want to enter another second number you have to write uh, you have to write the same word like this second equal to int input enter the second number you write something like this and if you press enter key this will be displayed and you can if you want you can enter some number like this here also what it is uh, we have seen this what you have seen is the enter the second number will be displayed here then it waits for some case rooms. we have entered number 34 then it waits for enter key when that enter key is pressed this integer function will be executed so it will be converted that string 34 is a string it will be converted in an integer and it will pass an input second so it will be like this now if you want to add those two numbers and print the sum also so you can use the print function to do that so simply you have to type print something you can write the sum is or something like that then you can put uh, this is an expression you have to separate it with a comma then you have to simply type first plus second so first contains the first number and second contains the second number and if you press the enter key this will be displayed the sum is you will get sum as 79 so in this way you can do this in practice here so what you have studied is you have seen this uh, integer function also similarly you can use the same uh, for float also if you are entering some uh, real numbers uh, decimal numbers or uh, if you are entering some floating point numbers you want to enter 45.5 or something like that so you can simply enter like this i will copy the same thing so what you have to do is uh, it will be float so if you try to enter this float so first number will be float you can enter something like this 30.5 and if you want to enter a uh, second number so second number also can be entered like this uh, it is should be converted into float okay and you are entering something like uh, 23.7 then if you want to print the sum, you can use the same line. You have to type here, print the sum as first plus second. And if you press the enter key, you will get the result. So you, have, you know how to convert this integer and float number. So what uh, the input function enters uh, everything as a string. So it considers everything as a string. So we have to convert it into integer or floating point number. So that's the shadow of this input function. Everything is considered to be string. So if you want to show that it is a number, you have to convert using int. Or if you want to convert into floating point number, you have to use this float number. Okay. Okay. So this is a summary of our basic functions that we are what we have seen in this lecture. Uh, one is float we have seen and a string of digits is, will be given as input so it converts a string of digits to a floating point value so if you use the same int it converts a string of digits to an integer value then if you use this input function what it does is it displays a string prompt and waits for the keyboard input and returns a string of characters entered by the user and we have already seen this print expression so it evaluates the expression and displays them separated by one space in the console window. And if you use something like this, string 1 to string 2, it glues the two strings together and returns the result. So this is a summary of uh, the basic functions that we have seen in this lecture. So try to do install this Python and try doing this kind of uh, simple code in your, in your interactive shell environment. So this is a reference book that I have used, Fundamentals of Python by Kenneth L. Lambert and B. L. Indonesia. Thank you.